Well, preparations for the assembly in Tallinn in, in June are well underway. We've been working on this for almost two years now with a quite a large international team of, of volunteers and staff members. I think we're getting there and uh, we're looking forward to receiving um, delegates, observers and other people in Tallinn uh, in the middle of June. I expect this to be an opportunity for churches in Europe first and foremost to, to come together to share the fellowship of churches in Europe. Uh, it's five years since we had our last assembly and since then we've had the COVID-19 crisis where people have not been able to, make, to meet. So I think people are urging really to come together, to feel the fellowship, to share together, to worship together and to pray together. And then of course also to make decisions uh, on the future of, uh, of the organization. How are we churches in, in Europe today in a society which is uh, characterized by increasing uh, secularism, with increasing pluralism and uh, with increasing crisis throughout Europe? So I think these will be one of, uh, or some of the, uh, the items that will be on, the, uh, on top of the agenda when we meet in a few weeks' time. By coincidence, uh, we planned a uh, large uh, virtual meeting, virtually a few uh, hours after the invasion in uh, 2022. So we had the opportunity to get together uh, in a few, a few days after uh, the invasion and we met more than 100 people virtually uh, to talk about what had happened, to pray together, to uh, share our thoughts, uh, to cry together. Uh, uh, and I think that was that was the beginning of, of a strong uh, commitment from Keck uh, to, to working and engaging with this conflict and this war. Uh, since then, we we conducted uh, uh, some uh, uh, some visits in the region in Ukraine uh, with church leaders. Uh, most recently, we have launched our initiative Pathways to Peace, which is a uh, catalogue of of, uh, of uh, of projects and initiatives uh, where we welcome our member churches to become part of, uh, of a, common, um, a common work uh, towards peace uh, in this war and also especially to, to work towards what comes after the peace, what can be built, how do we rebuild Ukraine and also churches and uh, looking at the role of churches in the process now and not least after the war ends eventually. Well, there's been a very strong call from our member churches that we should engage as much as possible in, in, in this uh, current crisis. In various ways, uh, our member churches themselves have been very active in uh, working with refugees from, uh, from Ukraine, uh, with relief work, uh, making sure that uh, there were uh, goods taken into, um, into Ukraine uh, that were needed there for refugees and others. So I think that the local response and the response from local churches from our member churches has been huge and I think nobody really has the overview of what has happened. I think on our side we try to, uh, to work with uh, what is our comparative advantage in this. We approach the uh, European institutions in Brussels uh, with that particular perspective of a faith-based organization and try to make them understand, the decision makers, that also the church has a role to play uh, in a conflict like this and for peacemaking at the end of the day. This will be an opportunity for churches to express themselves, how they uh, see the conflict in, uh, in Europe and the conflicts in Europe, how they see the situation at the moment, how they would like to address a situation with war on European soil, how they see themselves as churches, as resources for peace building and reconciliation. I think these will be pivotal uh, uh, issues to be discussed in Tallinn in June this year.